Hi, and welcome back to part two. In this video, you will see me start to prepare the kitchen ready to fit the units. I'll be plasterboarding the walls, plastering for the very first time, getting a company to come in to screed the floor, and getting the electrician to come in to run some extra cable for some new sockets and to run me a new cooker cable. So this is the original tiled floor. We have a company coming in that's going to screed over the top. We did attempt to take up a couple of tiles, but it was almost impossible. They start off with a primer, I guess it is, I'm not sure what it is, which they coat the whole floor with. And then they go over it with, I think they call it a screed. Um, I'm not sure what screed it is, but I left this bit to the experts. Now I found this absolutely fascinating to watch. Um, I'm not sure if this is self-leveling or what, um, but it just flows so nicely. And when they're finished, the whole floor, it just looks like a sheet of glass, as you can see. We decided while they was here to do the kitchen that we would get them to also do our hallway for us as well. Now you're probably thinking this isn't the kitchen. Well, you're absolutely right. This is one of the upstairs bedrooms, but I'd agreed with the electrician I would have removed the floorboards ready for the new cable. This is the current 6mm twin and earth cable to the cooker, which had to be replaced with a 10mm twin and earth for the new range master. Now I decided before plasterboarding the walls, I would take some measurements for a couple of reasons. I wanted to know where I would get a good fixing on the beams, and I also wanted to know where any cables were. So once I've plasterboarded, I would have it all documented. I'd also decided that I'd add some 18 mil ply at the top between the beams, so that when I fix the wall units to the wall, I would be sure to get a good fixing rather than just screwing into plasterboard. Well, that's one wall done, and hopefully I should get some decent fixings in this. So, time to add the first sheet of plasterboard. First, I wanted to cut out the sockets. I'd measured these already. Um, if you're wondering, I haven't got three hands. That's my wife holding the um, vacuum cleaner so we can capture any dust. Because as you know, it goes absolutely everywhere with plasterboard. Now, I may have overdone this on the plasterboard screws. I applied them about every six inches. But I've never done this before, and surely you can't have too many. So I wanted to make sure that these battens were completely flat because these battens had been applied to the original beams and there's no point plasterboarding over a wobbly wall basically. So this wall was exactly the same as the previous one. The only difference with this wall is I had slightly more wires to contend with and also water pipes. Now as you can see, it's now dark outside, 
That took me the best part of a day. I guess professionals will be laughing because it would have taken them a couple of hours. Now this third wall was an absolute pain. The battens that were attached to the beams were wobbly. If I run a spirit level across them, none of them were straight. So there was no point in me plasterboarding until I'd adjusted all the battens. I had to pack some of them out. Um, and I also had, as you can see, tons of wires to contend with. So I had to take lots and lots of photographs and document where they were. I also decided to run the battens for where I knew the fridge freezer cabinet would be so that I knew I could get a good fix in without screwing into any wires. Eventually I had the whole lot plasterboarded. I must admit it took me a whole day but I was pleased with the result. Now I knew that I had to tape the joints. Um, I'd seen this on other YouTube videos and I'd been advised as well when I bought the plaster. But any professionals out there that are watching this, please tell me if I've done this right or wrong. I'm hoping I've got it right. Um, I basically um, taped all the joints and I taped over all the screws because um, I didn't want any of the screws popping and coming through the plaster at a later date. Now I knew this tape had to be really tight into the corners, otherwise when I plaster I guess it won't go right into the corners, so I ensured it was a real tight and snug fit right into the very corners. Now for the scary part, plastering for the very first time. Now I've never plastered. I've watched my dad do it loads of times and I've watched tons of YouTube videos. But getting the consistency right is the tricky bit, as you will see in a second. What didn't help is I didn't have a proper whisk. I had a drill with a whisk attachment and I couldn't get it to the right speed. I eventually found a speed that worked for me and started mixing, kept on adding until it felt right. Now this clearly isn't at actual speed. I've sped this up on purpose, otherwise it'll be a bit boring for you to just watch me mixing plaster. Now, this is where I went wrong. The consistency that I had in the bucket was right, but I didn't know that, and I added a little bit more plaster. And as you can see, it starts to really get stiff. And I only realized this when I start to apply it to the wall. There was no way I was gonna make this mistake again, because this was really hard to get onto the wall, it just didn't flow. But, you learn. Now I used a multi-finish plaster, and the reason being, is when I went to the builder's merchants to buy it, there was a professional plasterer in the shop at the time. Um, and I said to him, what do you recommend? When I told him I was using it on plasterboard, he said you should really use a specific plasterboard plaster. He said, but for a novice, you'll struggle to use it because it goes off too quickly. So he suggested that I use multi-finish. Um, I took his advice and went with it. Right, here goes. No laughing from you professional plasterers out there. This is my first attempt. Now this clearly isn't actual speed, I've sped this up a little bit, well quite a lot actually. Now it was at this point that I realised this plaster mix was definitely too thick and the next mix would be a lot runnier. But I persevered with it and managed to get it to work, but it just didn't flow.
Now, it makes you realise how good these professional plasters are that do this every day. This is not easy at all. I'd do this for myself, but I certainly wouldn't do it in anybody else's house. It's something I've always wanted to try, so, you know, I had to give it a go. Once the wall was completely covered in plaster, I then gave the trowel a wash with an old paintbrush in clean water, and then I went over it again, but very, very lightly. I'm not sure what they call this. I think they call it troweling up. Um, so the plaster had started to go off slightly, but with the wet trowel, it seemed to flow so much easier and left a really nice smooth finish. I was really impressed with this bit. I was starting to enjoy this and starting to get the hang of it slightly, so I thought I'd quickly do the other wall next to it. So I knocked up another bucket of plaster, this time a different consistency. I didn't put as much plaster in. Um, it made it a lot runnier or a lot thinner, whatever you want to call it, and the plaster went on so much easier. It was much, much, much easier to move across the wall and it really did glide. Even at this point, um, when I'd finished and let it go off a little bit, just trailing up was so much easier. I'm not sure if you call it trailing up, I've just made that word up, I think. Um, but yeah, it just made such a difference by making the uh, mix a little bit wetter. And I was actually really starting to enjoy this as well. So I moved on to the third and final wall and this went a lot quicker. I was starting to get the hang of it. I've got the consistency of the plaster a lot better um, and I was really starting to enjoy it. In fact, I was gutted when it was finished. I wanted to carry on plastering. Um, but yeah, I have to say, really enjoyed doing this. Okay, so that's it for now. That's the end of part two. Hopefully you'll join me in part three when we start to put the kitchen together. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.